So how did I set up the simulations for the preview renderings that you saw? Well, basically they're employing the techniques we've been talking about in the other parts of this series. For the draped cloth effect, I went to my standard site for downloading free 3D scans, 3dscans.com, and I downloaded this sculpture here. Imported that here, transformed it so it sits at the center and has a certain scale, and then threw on a remesher, just to make this a bit easier on the collision detection for vellum. Merged this with the ground plane and fed it in as a collider into the vellum cloth configure. And in the cloth, I just piped in a grid, which I also remeshed here to have a small target edge length. Let's enable the wires here, and you can see it's got pretty short edges. And all I did in here in the vellum cloth is dial down the thickness as well as the bend stiffness. So this feels more like silk or like a soft, really bendy material than like thick cloth. In the vellum solver, I left pretty much everything at its basic standard settings, except dialing up the substeps to two. And after the simulation, I just ran a vellum post process with a spatial blur to blur out some irregularities, some edges in the mesh, and then subdivided this using a loop subdivision scheme. And I just subdivided it once. That's what I wrote out into a file cache. And let's see if that still loads. Seems so. So let's skip forward a bit. And yes, that is the result of this this really soft, flexible cloth that's draped over this sculpture. Next, this is my setup for the bouncy ball cannon. And it looks a bit more elaborate, but it really isn't. So what I'm basically doing here is I create this kind of ground plane that has this hemisphere cut out using a sphere, which I then clip. I group the edges. I assign normals to the edges in this point triangle, and then I extrude it using these normals that I just created. And finally, I reassign new normals so the shading is right. So that's my collider here. On the other hand, I configure my standard sphere here. This is this. And what I want to do is on the one hand, I want to transform it, move it a bit over. And then those two nodes here are basically a vellum configure balloon. So a vellum cloth where I dialed in both the bend and the stretch stiffness to be a bit higher than the standard settings. So those spheres wouldn't collapse when they hit the floor. And in the pressure, I think I left everything pretty much at default settings. I'm not sure I might have dialed in this stiffness here a bit higher. So these spheres bounce a bit more. After I did that, I split the output of the vellum constraints into this null here, which outputs the constraints, and into this null here, which outputs the geometry. But before we hand out the geometry off to our solver, what I did with this point triangle is I assigned a random velocity, pretty much the same as in our pig head example. That goes into our dot net. And basically what I have here is the same tree as for this sphere. However, just translated to the other side of the scene. So I have basically two positions from which the spheres are shot into the scene. This is basically sphere cannon one. This is sphere cannon two. And this is our dot net where all the solver action happens. So in here, I've got this tree. On the one hand, through my static object and my static solver, I bring in this ground plane with the hollow hemisphere. On the other hand, I create a vellum object with no initial geometry and constraints. These are left to the vellum source nodes here that I merged. So on the one hand, this is this source on this side here, which emits a sphere every fifth frame starting at my first frame. And my second vellum source emits a sphere every fifth frame starting on the third frame. So that results in something like this. So both sources alternate when they shoot out spheres. Well, both the vellum object and the vellum sources are fed into a vellum solver. From the basic settings, I dialed in more substeps. I increased that from one to three and dialed down the constraint iterations. That is merged with our static solver. And finally, after that, I appended a gravity sub and I dialed up the gravity here a bit because in this case, I didn't really regard or pay attention to the scale of the scene. And you can see this is quite giant here and these spheres are quite big. So when I had physically plausible settings for gravity and for velocity, everything looked a bit like in slow motion. So instead I increased both the velocity with which these spheres are emitted and the gravity pulling them down. Again, I appended a vellum post process with a slight spatial blur and again, a subdivision using the loop scheme. And all I do is export this as an alembic. Finally, the last setup, which is a tiny bit more elaborate than the other tearing setup that I've shown you, 
So let's just step through it. I start out by creating the collider. Again, downloaded a 3D scan from 3dscans.com, which I imported into Houdini using the file node, transformed it to sit where I like it to be, then again remeshed it to be a bit easier on the vellum solver. And on the other side, I created a grid, which I moved over here, remeshed that too, so that I end up with a finely subdivided grid like this, then pre-fractured it using the edge fracture, just display the pieces. Again, transform this a bit upwards after I ran a few simulation patterns as it turned out at this position it was falling into the face of the statue here that's what I wanted and then configured this vellum object using the vellum cloth and I did two things here on the one hand as usual I dialed down the bend stiffness so this cloth would behave more flexible on the other hand I also dialed down the rest length scale and what that does is as soon as simulation starts vellum tries to pull together the points that are held together by these cloth constraints and I do that to kind of crumple the cloth as soon as the simulation starts, just a bit. Apart from that, I threw in a vellum weld to weld together all those individual pieces so they wouldn't fall apart directly as the simulation starts, and then piped this in both the constraints as well as the geometry into my dot net. Also in here goes the collider geometry, and I have added one single point here on the fourth slot. And this point is animated. So let's see. So you can see from frame 70 or so, this point comes in here and moves to the null position. And that's all there is to this point. Just an animation pushing it inwards over time. So all of that feeds into this dot net here. And in here, this is what I created. On the one hand, the static object pointing to the third input of the dot net to load in the collision geometry, pipe that into a static solver and merge this with my vellum solver. For the vellum solver, I dropped on a vellum object, pointed that to the first and second slot of my dot net to load in the initial geometry and the initial constraints. And then I dropped down a pop force, and a pop force is basically like a wind only for pops or particles, which vellum is under the hood. And in here, on the one hand, along the x-axis, I dialed in a force. So this is basically the wind that's moving this cloth over the face of this statue. And on the other hand, I dialed in some noise here by increasing the amplitude from 0 to 1 and also typing in a small expression down here that moves the whole noise field in the direction of the wind. So it undulates in the wind direction. So that is all there is to this cloth blowing over the face of the statue. However, I want to fracture it and I want to trigger the fracturing. And for that, I'm going to use the point, the single point that I piped in through the fourth slot into my dot net. And that all happens in this pop wrangle here. And first in the inputs tab, I set the second input to my fourth context geometry. That is this slot here, the slot where the point comes in. And then in code, what I did is first I loaded this point's position. Keep in mind my input two is set to fetch what's coming in through the fourth slot here. So I can access this slot by addressing the second slot, which has the ID one. Load the position here, and I know there's only one point coming in, so it's got the point number zero. And then I check if my point's X position and my current position, so the current position of any point in that simulated cloth here, if the difference of their position, the absolute value of the difference of their position, that is their distance along the X axis. If this distance is smaller than half a unit, then I set an attribute called weld to minus one. And what weld does is weld stores which parts are stitched together, basically. And that is what the weld constraint in vellum creates. These are those stitches connecting those parts. And if their ID isn't set to anything meaningful, that means to minus one, which can't be a point number because point numbers always start from zero. If the weld ID is set to minus one, those stitches just let go. They disappear, basically. So let's look at this file cache where I cached out my simulation. And you can see this on the one hand is pulling together. That's due to the small rest length here and crumpling really nicely. Also, the wind moves it in this direction. And you can see the undulating noise along with the dynamics really nicely moving around this cloth here. And then the point here is moving in. And as soon as the point distance along X is shorter than 0.5, you can see those welds are disappearing and thus the cloth is tearing. And that's all there is to this setup. Drop down a file cache to cache this out. This took a while to simulate due to the resolution of this. And of course, the trusty vellum post process to blur out the positions a bit, smooth them a bit, and again, added one step of loop subdivisions and then cache this out again. And that is the tearing cloth setup. And then all there is to the preview renders is of course, lighting shading rendering, which is a whole different story. And a shout out goes out to a really good friend of ours, Benno Fashuren, who was really crucial 
on nailing the style for this one. All right, so that's how I created the preview renders. With that, let's close this basic vellum series. And if you're looking for more in-depth content, you might want to consider heading over to our Patreon. And as always, a very special thank you to our patrons, especially Kyoko Sakane, Martin Ögren, Joseph Howerton, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Refik Anadol, Rob Bryan Jr., and Mohamed Alabri. Thanks so much, guys. And as always, it's cheers and goodbye.